now an automated multi-million factory. That started from a garage. How inspirational, man. I'm Richard Ajay, the CEO of Casa Preco. After hearing the entire story of Casa Preco, it makes me feel like the story of everything is possible in Africa, Casa Preco really represents that story. Because, you know, I normally interview people and people normally say that, oh, it's not possible in Africa, you have to travel abroad before you make it and all of that. I just want to know, did Daddy ever left the country before he was able to come up with this concept of Casa Preco? Um, no, um, certainly. I mean, there are lots of possibilities that can happen in Africa. Um, for, for my father, he was in the, in the West, so he grew up in the West, in his village. He didn't um, even complete school. Um, Please, uh, are you trying to say Daddy is a village boy? No. <laughs> <laughs> I would love you to take me around the factory because I know people out there really want to see what really goes on in the factory. Certainly, I will. I will. It's certainly um, a magnificent um, factory that uh, most people that see it are very surprised. So I will certainly take you inside. I recently did a video in Somaliland about, about a beverage factory and I realized that they were import, importing the, uh, is it the, what do you call it, the preforms from another country. I want to know, I mean, you said you, you had the biggest in Ghana. Do you import or you manufacture it here? No, we manufacture our own preforms here. In Ghana? In Ghana, we manufacture our own preforms here. Um, and we are the only um, Ghanaian company doing that here in Ghana. Um, and it's actually also one of the biggest even manufacturing preforms, uh, manufacturing of preforms in Ghana over here. Oh yeah, so this is the uh, preform section. Okay. This is the first um, Ghanaian company producing preforms um, in Ghana. And this, yeah. this is what we produce here before we switch this um, into bottles. You see, I've been to a company that imports this, so I'm super excited to see that in my country, they produce this in here. So I guess I need to tell the Somaliland company that it's time for you to stop buying from China and buying from Ghana. For sure. That's a good business. Yeah. Yeah. I hope I'm going to get my share. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, wow. So these guys are the one producing it? Yes, so we have um, engineers over here. Oh, OK. On the, on the machine. Wow. Um, we have lab guys here that test the preference to make sure that it's of good quality. Um, we are running 24 hours. 24 hours? Yeah, 24 so hours. you switch workers? Yeah. So we have, they work 8 hours and then they switch. Oh wow. Nice to meet you, man. Yeah. You can see the produce going on, production going on. Yeah. Wow. So you can see these two machines. We have, we have we bought the same two machines and we are going to put in Kumase. Oh, yeah. so you're going to do the production here in Kumasi too? Yes. Yeah. The same three forms in Kumasi as well, to supply a Kumasi factory. How the three forms are made over here. Okay. The material is loaded over here. Oh, wow. It goes up through the pipes, come all the way here to the melting machine, and there's a mold inside this machine. It's called an injection machine. And the mold forms the three forms. The three forms? Yes. The melt, and then it forms the... Definitely, it has to come out hot. It does it's melted. It does come out of Wow. It does come out of So after this, what next? After this, then we transport the preforms onto the bottling line. Okay. Inside. So I'll show you the bottling line as well. All right. These are CO2 production units. So when you open the salt drinks, the fizzy when you see inside or you feel when you drink it's called CO2 and we produce our own CO2 here. Um, we also sell to the market so we sell to Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Accra Brewery, so many other companies that also buy from us. So what at all you don't produce here? Because he's producing CO2. Yeah, we try to produce uh, everything. He, he doesn't produce oxygen. Oxygen <laughs> is free you know. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. So we'll take you inside the factory. What are these tanks for? So these tanks are storage tanks. So we store water, alcohol, um, syrups mm. in here, um, concentrates in these tanks. Wow. It's beautiful, man. Now it's time to enter the production plant. I guess this is what each and every one of you have been waiting for. Yes. Come with us, okay? No problem. So the noise is here is yeah. the blowing of the bottle. That's the air uh -huh. blowing the bottle. So we put whatever shape of bottle you want into the blue mold. The blue mold blows it. There's a water that's cooling the bottle. bottle. After cooling it, you see a cooler here. Wow. So there's a 25,000 bottles filling machine an hour. 25,000 bottles an uh -huh. hour. Yes. So this machine is filling all the bottles that you see here. And this currently um, Royal Apple, which is a soft drink. Have you apple. guys produced it over here? And here we have seven lines. So this is just one line that you are seeing here. So uh, let's I mean, go through the line. The same factory got seven production yes, lines? Yes, the same factory. So which means like, let's talk about uh, the soft drink that you're producing. In a day, since it's producing um, 25,000 an hour. An hour. So it's just a pack. And we have about 16 in a pack. So we are getting about 40,000 packs in a day just from this line. So, after filling and uh -huh. tapping, the bottles then move all the way to the labeling machine. Oh. So these are the labels you see here. So the labels go on the row, goes up, and we have two heads for the labeling. We have two heads to match the 25,000 bottles an hour stay. Then after labeling, it goes all the way to the shrink packing. You can see the shrink packing over here. In this machine, the machine is packing the bottles into 16, so the 16 in a pack. You can also do 12 or 8 or whatever you want, but we put 16 in this partic particular drink. Okay. Um, and after putting it in the 16, you match it. You I, match I, it all the 16. I, I really want to test one. Test it, you can I, see. I have to test now. Uh, thank you. So, um, after it's packed into the 16, yeah. you find a wrapper down here that shrinks all the pack into a one pack, basically. And so you see, after here, it also goes into a heating panel. Another heating panel yeah, again? Yes, a heating panel that oh. shrinks it. That shrinks it to make it tight. But, can I touch it or it's not allowed? You can touch it, you can touch it. And there's a bottle here for you to also take. Hey! <laughs> see? Yeah, that's Royal Apple for you. I'm definitely taking this home. I, I just touch it to check whether it's hot or not. But it, it doesn't look hot because oh, I feel like it's really cool too. The drink is cool. What the drink is feeling is cool. Oh, okay. The drink itself is cool. Wow. Yep. So, so made in Ghana. Yeah. I hope I didn't mess. Oh, this is for me, eh? Yeah. I'll test it. I'll test it while I was out here, man. Even the alcoholic can I'm going to taste it. <laughs> <laughs> well, after the shrimp, how does it taste? Whoa! Made in Ghana, man. It tastes so fresh, man. But we need to get apple in Ghana. Definitely. Somebody should start growing apples in Ghana, yeah? So that you buy your own apple from Ghana, Ghana too. Definitely. So these are some of the things that we feel um, the youth and the younger people can also take advantage. Um, of some of the raw materials that we are not able to get in Ghana, so then you can get into farming and get it right here in Ghana. I, I want to ask you a question, which means that you, you're saying this because you know that there are opportunities in the country. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, what are the things that you think the youth of this country can involve in? Oh, so I think um, a major factor in, in Ghana that the youth can get involved in is the great sector. The great sector is so huge. And for me, I, I, I would encourage the youth to get in 
um, the agri sector because once you start any farming um, business, you employ so many people, especially within the community. It's always encouraging when you go to a farm, you see all these women and all these men farming the product. So um, I think agri agri business is certainly some something that um, you can get into, mm. and as you know, we import so much stuff into Ghana. Um, even on the poultry side, on the animal thing, there's still a lot of imports that are coming into Ghana. Mm. So some of these things, the youth can get into and start a living for themselves. Amazing. Um, so after this, where next do we go? Um, you see the palletizer. There's a palletizing machine that okay. puts the pack into um, a pallet, and it's all automated. So automated? Yeah. This is now an automated multi-million factory. That started from a garage. How inspirational, man. Wow. So this is the kitchen that we produce. Uh -huh. and blend everything. And I will introduce you to the chef, which is Laurentia. So meet Laurentia. Hi. Tell you everything that happens here. I, I, he's telling me that this is the kitchen. Sure. And if you go to a kitchen and there's a woman in there, you know that they got the best food. Sure, sure, sure. Can you tell me more about your kitchen? What is in here? Yes, my kitchen is fully automated. No human intervention. Everything is um, automated. You can see the pipeline over here. We do transport our concentrates based on the backside. By the click of the button on the screen, we dispense the required quantity for the recipe into the tank. It's there.
for corrugator is able to do 300 meters per minute. So we ran 12 hours in a day. So if we are going to calculate, in tonnage we are able to do about 200 tons in a day. Whoa, that's huge. Yes. So I mean the people that work on the production, are they Ghanaians? Yes, everybody here is Ghanaian because this is a Ghanaian company. So we employ... And, uh, and what is your duty in here? I am the general manager for technical and operations. As we were, you saw the 25,000 bottles an hour line. Exactly. This is our biggest line. It's 35,000 bottles an hour. So you can see how fast the bottles are moving so, here. So this is the biggest 35,000 per hour that we have here. And what is the lowest you have here? We have uh, 9,000 bottles an hour. Oh, the other one that you yes. showed me. And as Kasapot, we are bringing the biggest line in West Africa. 80,000 bottles an hour line. Well, when you bring that, let me come here to no commission problem. it. No problem. <laughs> I'll, I'll invite you in here. Do you know how I feel now? I feel, I feel like um, a baby in a candy shop uh, 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 where I'm seeing everything and I yes, want to touch. Yes, yes. You can touch. You can touch. <laughs> Whoa. I mean, this is more like creating employment for the people living in Ghana. Certainly. Wow. So, um, what kind of problem? I mean, employment is certainly a very key part of us. So investment, we always talk about investment and we will encourage other Ghanaians to also invest in Ghana. Um, there's certain opportunity here, there's market here. Let, let, let me um, ask you a question. Why is it so important for Ghanaians to invest in Ghana? I mean, the main thing, why do we need to invest in Ghana? I mean, we have nowhere to go. Ghana is our country. If you don't invest in Ghana, what are the people going to do? You understand? We always keep talking about um, people going to school, coming out, and not having jobs. So, I mean, entrepreneurs in Ghana need to invest in Ghana, need to show that what is out there in the, in the Western world can also be done in Ghana. I remember that my, my dad was telling me that when the first time he went to Germany to buy these machines, they told him Ghanaians cannot run these machines. You understand? But he wanted to make a point, bring the machines, and we trained Ghanaians, we took them to Germany, and now Ghanaians are running these machines over here, um, giving jobs, feeding people. So I believe that opportunities are setting in Ghana, um, and people need to take advantage. We don't always have to wait for foreigners to come and invest in our country for us. Eventually, they all have to take the, the money outside to their country to develop. But you don't think that most of us have set up our mind in the sense that when you hear the word investor, we see it to be foreign. Certainly. That's, that's the negative part. Um, even from the government sector, everything. When you hear investor, people are always thinking about the foreign investors. But the government and the Ghanaian people should also support the local investors, the Ghanaian investors, the African investor that is also putting a lot of money within its own homeland. Uh, as an entrepreneur in Ghana, somebody who is investing in Ghana, do you think that you need a lot of capital before you be able to invest in Ghana? Okay, so for from our side, um, at this scale, um, we rely on the banks um, to take some facilities to invest in the company. Um, sometimes you certainly say that the interest rates in Ghana is quite high, so funding is quite expensive. Um, it used to be about 20, 25, but now over the past few years, it's been coming down 17, 20, which is so high. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, <laughs> certainly we hope the government will still keep working and pushing to bring it down to the single digit. That's our aim and our hope that the country can get uh, to I mean, well, what kind of single digit are you looking for? Nine I mean, is still high. Nine is still high. I mean, in Europe, you're looking at the three. In the US, you're looking at 4%. So something around that range will certainly be fantastic for Ghana. Um, but what I'll say is for entrepreneurs, you don't always have to start on a big scale. Um, I showed you how my father started. He started in a small way. Uh, so you don't have to go for big money or big capital. You start in a small way, and eventually your business will grow. And I'm telling you that once you see the growth, the banks themselves will keep chasing after you. To give you more funding to grow your business. Uh -huh. okay, so we are going to a lab over here. And so this is both R and and QA. Oh, what kind of uh, lab is that? So we do all the testing over here for oh. our product. Oh, okay. So even after blending, the lab guys will take it and bring it here to test before bottling mm. to make sure that the parameters are all right. And also even on the line whilst you are producing, every 30 minutes. The lab guys take a bottle, bring it up here to 
test all the parameters and make sure uh, wow. all the parameters meet the specifications that we've said we are going to uh, produce. Mr. Richard, there's one thing that I want to know, yeah? If you go to every company, there's one product that stands out. I really want to find out here at Casapreco, what is that special product that made the company where it is today? Okay, so for Casapreco, Alomo Vitesse mm -hmm. is what has made the company what it is today. Alomo Vitesse? Yes, the popular Alomo Vitesse. Whoa! <laughs> Alomo Vitesse is made by Casapreco? Yes, it's made by Casapreco and it's produced right here in this factory, which I'll go and show you. Alomo Vitesse, as I said, is our biggest brand for us over here. And that's what has made the company today. Mm. It's the biggest exported drink from Ghana to the world. Um, so Alomo Vitesse is also made of herbs that we take directly from the forest and we put it in Alomo. So there are a lot of medicinal benefits. So as you're enjoying, you are also doing what? Healing. Putting a lot of medicine in you. Okay. So Alomo Vitesse, we produce all our spirit products over here. And so here we are producing the whiskeys. We are producing the jeans, we are producing, um, we have a new brand called Black Rock Honey Whiskey that we produce here. So our local test, I mean, as you can see, is being produced here right here. Um, in Sake, over here. This is like more like a fast food thing, yeah? Yes, it is, uh, um, in terms of, I'll say in terms of um, convenience. Sachet is the way to go for us. Uh, so we have the bottles, we have the sachet, which is still very easier for people to um, take anywhere they go. So how much will something like this cost? Uh, one city. One city for everyone, yeah? That's interesting. Okay. So basically, after production and palletizing, the forklift guys take the pallets and come and store them in our warehouse over here. And over here, we're able to store over close to 500,000 cases of products over here. Um, so this is our warehouse where all the products you see in Ghana are shipped from. Wow. So, I mean, apart from selling in Ghana, uh, this same thing you export? This same warehouse, we pick all the export products into Togo, Nigeria, South Africa, Liberia, um, Europe, and the Americas. All the products come from here. I, I want to know, you, you lived abroad before, right? Yes. What were you doing there? Um, so I just went to school in the in the US. I was there for about four years. Um, did my undergrad and my master's over there. And I did some small work um, whilst I was doing my master's um, in, in university. I did my master's in uh, management. And I did my MBA in finance and global business. And after that, why would you come back? Ah, so after that, um, I decided to come back, join the, the family business and grow it. Um, because I feel, um, I mean, as Ghanaians, we always need to come back to go our country and our economy. Um, and I believe there's always, there's always opportunity here in Ghana mm. um, for us to grow. And as I told you, um, for me, when I came back, the business was only into, into um, spirits and alcoholic products. Mm -hmm. But we've been able to grow the business, including the beers, soft drinks, water. Um, so there's opportunity here in Ghana. Um, so anybody that's living out there, you have to know that certainly there's opportunity in Ghana. And once you come here, you certainly make it once you have the right mindset and the zeal to grow yourself, your business, and as well, the nation. I have one question to ask you. If you have the chance to change one thing in the country, Ghana, what would that thing be? I don't know. If I have one thing, um, to change in Ghana, um, for me, I would say that there should be more bigger businesses in Ghana. Um, education is also very key. So for me, I would say that there should be more investment in education, getting people educated, and also changing the mindsets of people in Ghana. A lot of people may go to schools coming out thinking they want to work in other businesses, but I think um, we need to change our mindsets into more entrepreneurial to make sure that once you come out, um, you don't want to work for a company that is employing um, 10,000 people. You can start your own business and also employ, what, two, two people, three people. So if you have at least 
10,000 people employing one, two, three people, you have what? Almost 30,000 people right there. So that's the mindset that I feel that if Ghanaians um, can change and become more entrepreneurial, we shouldn't fear venturing into business. Um, we should have that zeal. What is the major challenge running such a huge uh, business here in Ghana? The major challenge? Um, I think in Ghana, one of the major challenges we spoke about already, raw material sometimes, is difficult to get in Ghana. So there's a lot of importation of raw materials. Um, so that's one major challenge we find in Ghana. And I hope that one day Ghan Ghanaians um, and there will be other businesses that will invest in some of the raw materials we use here to produce. So I'll say that's one of the major challenges. We have um, sometimes also importing things into the country is also a challenge, especially at the ports. Um, and Ghana itself, we've seen in this pandemic, um, as we sit here, Ghana is waiting for vaccines. If the country had been able to invest or thought way back that let's find people, let's find entrepreneurs that are into um, all these pharmaceutical stuff, we wouldn't be sitting here waiting for, what, vaccines. So we need to do more things ourselves instead of relying on the Western world for a lot of things. Do you, do you know Ghana's GDP? Uh, I believe Ghana's GDP is around 70 billion. And uh, what, what is Casapreco's um, contribution to Ghana's GDP? Um, certainly we should be a major part of the contribution mm. in terms of GDP. Um, as I said, for us alone, we are doing close to 150, 160 million um, dollars in terms of revenue. Mm. So we should be a major size of the GDP. But what I want to talk about is um, in Ghana, um, we are quite strong in the non-traditional exports. So, as I said, Casa Perkin is um, the number one in terms of beverage exports outside of Ghana. And we are contributing a sizable amount, close to, I believe, close to 5% in terms of the non-traditional exports in Ghana, if you take out the gold and the cocoa. What are you going to tell your lovely customers out there who consume Casa Perkin every day? Um, I think Casa products products um, and our consumers, I would certainly say that We've been supported by the consumers over the past um, 30, 33 years. Um, we always try to come up with new things um, for Casa Prepo. Our consumers should look for more product from us. From us today, what I want to say is that we are coming out with our beer product, Freedom Beer. Um, so consumers should look out for this brand and enjoy. And for the people out there too, outside of Ghana, anytime you come into Ghana, don't forget to try the number one export product from Ghana. That's Alomo Bites. Thank you very much. Can somebody be uh, have a franchise of Casa Prepo in their various countries? Why not? Why not? Anybody that's certainly interested in um, selling Casa Prepo in the countries where they are based, we are very open to, to working with those people. I, I, I want to be the agent for that so that I no can problem. get that 1%. <laughs> so that I can get that 1%. Thank you. <laughs>